remnants of a universal veil. So it's got the uh, large base. There's another large base down in there of an Amanitas mushroom. The large base. Uh, the Amanitas typically have remnants of a skirt. These ones don't. And these are awfully thin. But they got the coloration and the look of a, you know, with the white speckles from the Universal Veil and the cream. Almost of like a Philoides. I mean, it is Philoides. Uh, death cap. If I remember right, death caps are supposed to have like a citrusy smell. And These don't really have a citrusy smell, but then I've never actually seen or smelt one, so I'm not too sure. Uh, it's out here just in the general woods. Uh -huh. There's a baby oak, you know, and a lot of amanitas like to be in the symbiotic relationship with oaks. So it could be doing it with oaks, you know. Relating with oaks. If it is an Amanitas, and then if it is a death cap. Kinda cool. So this <coughs> so this is the uh my lake shore pumpkin. It's a beautiful little pumpkin. Uh it's pretty small though. Sugar pumpkins, pie pumpkins are small. Probably bigger than this. Maybe up to like right here, you know. But uh, this growing wild doesn't get all those nice fertilizers and things. So I'm going to cut it in half. Uh, I want those seeds because any pumpkin that grows pumpkins and squash reseed real well, you know, like seed is most likely just gonna you know scatter out there's most likely gonna turn into a plant you know and then one that grows on the lake shore it's probably got extra special seeds which are extra special resilient where you can scatter them so uh, I definitely like these seeds you know if it grows that well you know you can scatter it on a bunch of rocks and it grows into a plant how it looks on the inside so beautiful, uh, a ton of seeds, I love it. Uh, so pumpkin seeds are like a normal people food. People roast them. Uh, and what do you call it? They're also a good natural dewormer. And when you do humanure, uh, it's always good to have a natural dewormer on hand. Uh, I'm just going to scatter all of these because you can never have too many pumpkin plants. Uh, but once I do have too many pumpkin plants, I'll start using the seeds like as a food source, you know. But for now, it's just going to be scatter them and see if, see if they'll grow. So, uh, I'm not going to bother cleaning it out better. Uh, it may be a little stringy, but uh, I don't mind stringy. Uh, stringy is called texture. See, these things are ready to put on fire. It's got in some tinfoil.
So they've had two hours. Uh, and they're nice and soft. <sighs> A little char Charizard right there. Uh, the other one didn't have any charring. This is the second half right here. First half is in the goodness. Uh, scrapes off. Real easy. With spoon. Uh, it's still hot. So, you know, it may come off easier or harder if it's cooled down. But, you know, uh, the more it cools down, the more I got to heat it up again. I don't want it too hot. Take off that little burn bit. Don't want it too hot. Because then I'll cook the eggs when I put the eggs in here. So, I'm going to put this. I'm going to compost these peels. Uh, put them in the toilet. Uh, now I'm going to blend the pumpkin proper with eggs, sugar, uh, I got some evaporated milk that was on sale. A can of, I think it's evaporated milk. It's been such a long time. I can't remember. That's evaporated. Got two eggs left in a pack of eggs. I got more eggs out in the car. I gotta run in. Uh, I know I'm leaning towards just two eggs because I got those in here. Uh, problem with just two eggs is it might not set up enough. But I'm thinking it'll be fine. No. I'm going to give it four eggs. So I'm going to go. I got more eggs out in the car. Uh, make it more of like a firm custard rather than just a runny, crumbly one, you know? The eggs will firm it up. That's looking good. Not bad, not bad. Get some slices. As you do.
So I'm going to use a hand blender. Blend up uh, miscellaneous bits and bobs. Oh, ingredients, that's what they're called. Miscellaneous ingredients in this pouring container. Get that going. So this is going to be the crust. Got here sandwich baggie. Says uh, cinnamon graham crackers on sale. Use one of the, one of the sleeves of the graham crackers. Then this is some rich and creamy Betty Crocker frosting, cream cheese frosting. And looking at it, it's ninety-eight percent of it is sugar and palm oil and water and corn syrup and corn starch. So instead of I don't got butter, because butter I think goes bad. So I just don't even bother carrying it, stocking it. All of the things I use. Ingredients I use are what do you call it? You know, they don't really go bad fast, you know. You don't need refrigeration, you know, they're kind of a they last a while. So I'm gonna use I don't use butter and I ran out of uh, lard. I used up the last of my lard and a candle, and I haven't gotten around to picking up more lard. This is, this palm oil stays solid like lard at uh, room temperature. So I'm going to use this as my lard. Well, not the whole thing. I'm going to use about a half inch. And uh, mix that, because normally it would be like butter and sugar and salt and all that that you would mix and your graham cracker crumbs but Uh, this is kind of simplifies it, you know, rather than making those flavors, you know, adding the sugars and all that, it kind of, it's going to be a cream cheese graham cracker crust, which is, uh, kind of interesting. Oh, and cinnamon, you know, that's kind of why I go with honey when you can go with cinnamon, you know, and it comes on sale, anyway, you know, kind of, you might as well, whatever there was a time when it's on sale. Uh, so, the rest, so I took the label off this cream cheese frosting. So I'm gonna put that in some water. I got a pot of water on the stove. And, uh, you know, it's just some embers in the stove right now. Uh, but it's warming up that water. I'm going to put this in that pot of water to get this melted down, you know, at room temperature. And it's like 45 degrees right now. It's a cold day, you know, high of 30 today. You know, 45 degrees inside here, you know, inside the shack. Well, and that's at thermometer height, you know, kind of depending on where you're at, your elevation in the shack depends on the actual temperature. Using some of it on some pancakes, gingerbread pancakes, very nice.
Well, I don't like the ingredients. It would be nice if it had actual cream cheese in it, but I do like the taste. It still tastes good. Sugar and oil. Doesn't get much more decadent than that. Both of which are like real hard to find out in the wild in nature. Pop this in the pot, get it started warming up and thinning down. It's gonna take a while to mix this up. So I'm gonna do that off camera. Mm. But, we got two eggs. Had to do the dishes real quick. Clean off the spoon. Yeah, that's how I like to do the dishes. Tastes really good. These eggs were out in the car last night. Uh, it got down to like 15 degrees. Really cold. My car doors were frozen shut this morning. Doesn't look like any of them cracked. That's, oh, oh, no, that's just a poo streak. And yeah, none of them cracked, which is nice. Here in the shack, I can put my coat over the top of them. My egg plate. I can put my coat over the top of them. These are hot still. I took these off the stove, I don't know, 15 minutes ago. You know what, I've been monkeying around doing other things. Oh, but it's, you know, like 45 degrees in here. So now, you know, they were really hot. Now they're just normal hot. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Hundred degrees, maybe. Not hot enough to to cook the eggs. So I want this thing to. Uh, I want to incorporate the eggs. Before I put them back on the heat. Uh, clean my hands so I can let them clean when I'm done uh, mushing up my crusts. My evaporated milk. And uh, one can. Give it a shake. So now it's a milkshake. Uh, I usually use sweetened condensed milk, but this was on sale. So it's kind of like, oh, this looks nice. I'm gonna pick this up, and I really don't got anything to use it for. So, pumpkin pie is a good thing to put it in. Oh no. Lid fell down to the bottom.
There we go. So, I never used to know the reason behind cupboards. It's like, why have a cupboard? You know, in your kitchen. It doesn't make any sense. Because, uh... You can't see what's in the cupboard. You gotta open up the door to find the thing, you know, and you maybe end up opening up two or three doors looking for the thing. You know, you gotta open up the door to put the thing in there and then to take the thing out. So it's kinda like, there's really no point in the cupboard. And I was thinking about just doing shelves out here, you know, like in the house. But then, uh, you know, doing this, you know, uh, I just got stuff sitting on shelves. I'm gonna give it some sugars. Maybe, maybe, let's do this official. I'm gonna actually be official. So this is one of the jars I'm gonna can my pumpkin pies in. It's got these marks, cup marks. So the question is, how sweet do you want your pumpkin pie? I'm gonna go with three quarters of a cup of sugar. I'm, I'm measuring, what is this? That's actually three quarters of a cup. Here's some pumpkin pie spice. Just taking off that. We got one, two, and three, and four. Uh, something like that. Uh, maybe a little more. Get it nice and pumpkin y spices. Here, I got some salt. That's solidified. I don't got much salt in that little shaker. So I'm going to get out the. Hey boy. Oh! Yeah, the doors on cupboards keep dust off of your stuff. So dust doesn't accumulate on it. Or I guess if you got mice, you know, keeps out the mice. You know, or bugs, you know, keeps out the bugs. That was probably way too much salt. I forgot what I was doing, I was just pouring. So this is gonna be maybe a little bit of a salty pumpkin pie. But it's got a cream cheese frosting, so I'm gonna mix all that in there. Yeah, so get dust everywhere. But that's why I put my cans upside down so that the lids are down. And then when I use it, I pull them up, and there's, you know, it's a clean lid at that point, you know. Whereas if it was like this, this would be all full of dust. The lid would be all full of dust, you know. But having it upside down. I keep a clean, clean lid. I'm going to put a pie in this jar here in a minute. Well, not in a minute, but in a little bit. So I'm going to get my blender going. i got to dig it out. So I almost forgot. I'm gonna get it some vanilla. One, two, uh, three. Two and a half. Two and a half bits of vanilla. Now at this point, it's pretty standard. I'm gonna, like a pretty standard uh, pumpkin pie filling. I'm guessing.
Wow. Perfect amount of sugar, I think. At this point, you know, once it's cooked, it'll probably change. Uh, that that salt is borderline. I mean, right off the bat, it's kind of a hair too much salt. Then it mellows out. <laughs> So at least it wasn't too much salt. Uh, but this is like a pretty standard one. More or less, you know. As far as my cooking goes, you know, there's really nothing too crazy going on with it. So, gotta change that. I got some two year old butterscotch chips. I'm gonna frozen into a block. Uh, I'm thinking butterscotch will be a good good pairing. And I got them sitting around. Mainly what I want these butterscotch chips for is uh, gingerbread pancakes, but because they're this mass, I haven't gotten around to using them. It's like a little brick, a butterscotch brick. Let's see about... I don't know if this uh, blender is going to be able to do it, but hopefully it'll uh, be able to break these bits up a little bit. Kind of make it, you know, kind of like a more of a chip than a block. Butterscotch chips rather than butterscotch blocks. Otherwise, it'll be just like a nice little mouthful of butterscotch goodness, you know, kind of mixed into the uh, pumpkin pie. So it'll be like your standard pie filling. And then, uh, what do you call it? bit in a bob here and there. Oh! Butterscotch will go good with uh, salt as well. It's like salted caramel. blender or it blended up good. You definitely hear those chunks at first. Yeah, blender's fine. So it uh, blended it up good. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna stop there. I was thinking about adding some oatmeal to it. You know, make it a little more filling. Give it a little more roughage. But that would be a little, I might as well save that crucifixion for a different cooking, different culinary project. Okay, so my pot filling is done. It can be hard trying to uh, 
call something finished when you've grown so attached to it. It's like you gotta move on, you know. But sometimes that's just what you gotta do. You just gotta move on. And then I got this. This is the uh, crumble up graham crackers with the cream cheese. That little baggie was too small, so I upgraded to a normal size freezer, one gallon freezer bag. More like my size right here. Uh, it's a little not enough uh, fats and liquids because it's still got little bits of crumbly graham crackers down at the bottom. You know, I want it more like this little lump right here where you can shape it into something, you know. But I need more liquids. And I forgot. Uh, the cool thing about cream cheese frosting is it's already seasoned you know but I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little vanilla uh, this is mainly for the liquid aspect of it you know the flavor is already there from the frosting but it's like why use water when you can use this and this pretty much is water you know I just licked the side of it after I poured it and I had a little drip there, I licked it, and it's like, it's pretty much water. Water with a little bit of color added. But I really want more fats. Uh, so giving it some vegetable oil. I would give it lard, but I don't got any. And this is my only fat. So that may be too much. That was about a teaspoon of lard and a half teaspoon of something uh, vanilla oh. wow we took it maybe a, a real good amount I may need a little more oil but it may be good now you don't want to rush the mixing because you know it takes like a few minutes for the oils and the liquids and the dries to fully combine you know so if you put some and it's like mixing cement you know it takes a few minutes for it to really combine so you don't know the consistency you got right off the bat you know after a few seconds it looks like oh it's not going to be enough but then after a minute it ends up being the perfect amount you know Okay, it looks like it's the perfect amount right off the bat. It's probably too much. Uh, this one may end up needing just a hair more oils. It's going to be a little too crumbly, I think, as is. And I don't really want to give it more frosting, because that's sugar. And, uh... While that's good, uh, too much sugar and it's just gonna stick to the side of the jar. Burn, you know, caramelize and burn to the side of the jar. I really don't want it to do that. You kind of want to be able to form it into a ball. And yeah, I think this is close. I mean, this is right there on the edge. You can get a nice ball, but it's still a little crumbly. Probably because it's frosting and not lard. It's so much sugar in it, you know? It's probably why it's so crumbly. And just gotta use your judgment. So this is the whole point of learning the hard way. You can follow a recipe, but then you're learning just the right way and not the wrong way. You learn the wrong way, you learn not only that it's the wrong way, but you learn a thousand other things along the way. I'm gonna give it a pinch more. Uh, you know, it won't be like perfect, but you can do a lot more. You know, uh, variety-wise, 
because you just have that well-rounded knowledge base rather than, you know, cute skills, you know, like, uh, like a recipe calling for bread, calling for so much flour, so much water, whatever. Uh, on a humid day, you know, if the flour is like in a paper bag, it's gonna be, uh, have a high moisture level. And if you follow that recipe, it'll be a, a stickier dough, which will do this. You know, if it's a hot day, that yeast is gonna be way more active. And if you wait so many more minutes, it's gonna be whatever, you know. So it's kind of, you know, you learn the hard way by putting too much moisture in there, letting the yeast go too long, putting too little moisture in there, letting the yeast not go long enough. You kind of get an idea. You learn, you know, what those different things should look like and be like, you know, when it's the product, the end result turns out to be decent. You know, you'll never really get a great product, but you kind of can roll with the punches better, you know. And when you're talking end times wise, you know, it's kind of, I'm not going to have all these fancy things, you know. This is going to be my uh, acorn bread, and then on times it'll look like this. This is my acorn flour, look. Yeah, so this looks good for my graham cracker crust. So what I'm going to do now is get some jars going. I'm going to kind of line the inside of these jars with my crust, and then pour the uh, filling in there. So, gonna do this in six jars. See what that gets me. Get this ready. my dough. I don't know if this is in frame or not. Down here. Well, let's do this. Okay. So I'm making a little log. Divide this into thirds. This stuff tastes incredible. This is like all the good things in life right here. Oh, well, and the uh, filling. This is just a really good dessert. While tasting these separate ingredients, 
What is this? I think this is a full one. Wow, how is a uh, this is a small full one. I wasn't sure if that was a half already, if I already cut it in half. So gonna need a little manipulations to get it get it equals. Uh so I'm canning my pumpkin pies. So if I haven't said yet, this is a hmm butterscotch cream cheese shoreline pumpkin pie in a jar. Which is just about all the cool things in one. You know, it's kind of like one of those uh, forms where it's like a blank space where you put in a verb, a blank space where you put in an adjective, a blank space where you put in this, that, and the other. Let's see. Those are definitely my smallest. This one's my biggest. Just gonna do a little pinch. A little pinch. And a little pinch. And that should be about even. So I'm gonna give each jar. Ball of goodness. Uh, sweet. Very sweet. And you can tell that there's some kind of a bread or something going on in there, but I'm going to I don't want to get the outside of my jars all oily. This is, uh, whenever you're handling doughs, it's an oily process. Oh, I'm going to be pressure canning. So that oil would get into the can or water. That's well, definitely not much of a dough. Uh, it probably should have been. Oh, maybe a whole box of graham crackers to give this a proper lining. But this is a dessert that you eat straight out of the jar. Let's see if it'll show. Hardly a complete surface, but uh, don't want it any thinner because then it won't really be there. You won't be able to taste it. You know, it just tastes like a very slightly different bit of pumpkin pie, you know? But having it kind of thick, you get that different taste going on, different taste and texture. So this is like a bit of cream cheese at the bottom, you know? And then on the top, there'll be the more cream cheese. Uh, and I'm not filling these jars all the way up. Uh, one thing is that custards like these things expand. Uh, well, when you bake them in an oven, they expand, you know. Uh, they uh, dry out on top. Uh, and sometimes you actually sear it, you know, like you might cook a pumpkin pie at like 400 for the first 15 minutes, you know, and then 375 for another 30 minutes or something. I don't know. That kind of sears it. So you get skin.
but then it uh it expands. These custards expand when you cook them. Uh, they won't really double in size, but they do get a lot bigger, you know. And then when they cool down, they deflate. Uh, but I'm gonna be pressure canning, so. I don't know if they'll really expand because they'll be under like this is going to be pressure canned under 10 psi. So will they still expand under 10 psi? Probably, but it's not something I want to risk. If I put in too much batter uh, and it expands, it'll get into the water and make a mess, and it'll coat this lid area so it won't get a good seal and I'll have to eat all of these within you know a few days so they won't go bad and that's not really a problem because they taste so good you know it's kind of a I wouldn't mind eating them real quick but also I want to drop a little bit of weight so I use cream cheese frosting instead of lard watching my Lard intake, no. <laughs> now, actually, I do think lard's the uh, densest. You know, I think it's got more calories than sugar. You know, the cal most calorie dense food, item, ingredient, whatever, most calorie dense thing out there, I think it's lard. So, you know, actually, you know, if that's the case, you know, doing frosting actually is. Uh, uh, you know, more calorie conscious way of doing it. And I guess that's the problem with society today. It's kind of that's how society plans to stay in shape. Just uh, eat frosting instead of lard. And that's how you uh, lose weight, you know, and then when it's not working, they're like, what is this? So that's looking good. And this is smelling good. It's kind of like a, a holiday shake. Now this is the real benefit of mixing this up in this little, uh, this little, uh, tube thing. Pitcher. Just how easy it pours. It's incredible. Oh, I love it. So this has plenty of room to expand. I'm actually going to put a little bit less in these. I don't think I got enough juice. Yeah, so that's probably a perfect amount of pie crust for this amount of, you know, for one pumpkin's worth of pie filling. Gonna do the rest equals. Uh, so something and something. I got the uh, frosting on the stove. If you don't pre-cook your frosting, you always have problems at this point in the cook. You don't pre-cook your frosting. Oh, so good. So good. Uh, I accidentally put a lot of salt in this, but that salt is just really knocks it out the park at this point. You know, it really gives it a nice flavor. It's like a 
This is not like your standard pumpkin pie, let me tell you that. This is uh, definitely been crucified, but in a good way, you know. Well, and then things always change from raw to cooked, you know. Once these are cooked, you never know what's going on. It's going to be a lot more mellow. The pumpkin flavor, you know, in it, it's going to be really mellowed out. And it's really hard to say if the salt will mellow out, you know. So I don't want to speak too soon on the amount of salt. Oh. Yeah, pumpkin raw. Or just plain pumpkin, I mean. I think the size of the jars. Plain pumpkin, not very good. But you give it. You give it some sugar. So uh, this is the frosting. And kind of, you remember, this is solid at room temperature. But I've had it in my double boiler. No, I've had it in my canner. Uh, the canner is warming up water. So I want this to float on top if I can. Oh, it's going to sink. But I want it liquidy so I can maybe get it on top so it's like an actual frosting. So you got to keep in mind, this is just sugar and oil. Betty Crocker knows how to do it. Uh, I wasn't sure what I was going to do this, so I didn't want to actually make cream cheese frosting. And then it's kind of like, will cream cheese frosting last? So I used a jar of evaporated milk. So, you know, milk, if you evaporate it or condense, sweeten and condense it, you can apparently can it. But you don't see a whole lot of milk products canned. So it's kind of like, how well would it take? You never know. Uh, oh. But, you know, they have these frostings just sitting out on the shelf. So it's fair to say that these frostings are shelf-stable. Uh, so I should be able to do that. Got to do the dishes. Mm. Wow. Filling, frosting. These two turned out real nice. It's kind of like the last little bit of it was a lot more runnier than the front little bit of it, the top of it. It's good. A little layer of frostings. Not too much, not too little. So I'm gonna Put the lids on. Pop them in here. This is where I had frosting. Uh, you know, it's hot, but you know, it took what was that, 15 seconds for it to get.
kind of too hot, you know, on my hand. It's barely hot at all. But I got that. So I'm gonna feed the fire. Put the cans in there and let them go. So this is how it looked. This is, I don't know, a handful of days later, a few days later. This is how it looks straight out the uh, canner, pressure canner. It definitely expands, and because it's in vacuum, it doesn't deflate again. You know, like regular pie would expand and then deflate. This expands and then stays expanded. Pie that boiling. And it, uh, expansion, it gets mixed up. You know, there's some of the frosting going down. Ugh. I fell in. It's a layer of cream cheese on the bottom. Kind of like uh, it separates from the graham crackers almost. So, I mean, there's the line of graham cracker. So, it doesn't look that pretty, but it still tastes really good. And then, uh, kind of, this I just had on the stove. And then it started boiling. This one was my prettiest. It had the most clear definitions going on, but putting it on the stove to heat it up, it remelted it. So it was kind of like boiling in the jar with a stuck down lid. Kind of cool. Pressure cannon. So I'm going to do this one. A little bit of liquid. What do you call it? When you're not baking it, it doesn't dry out. This is breakfast. Something actually kind of healthy and then something sweet and loaded with sugar. Well, it tastes a lot more like a pumpkin pie now than it does raw. When it's raw, everything is better raw. Cooking just zaps the flavor. Like your pie fillings and your cake batters. They got raw eggs. Really risky, but Rocky can do it. Granted, he could also beat Apollo. Maybe a raw pumpkin pie for breakfast will get you to be a professional boxer. Definitely get that protein from the eggs. Yeah, a lot more similar to a normal pumpkin pie. Mellowed out like that. Still sweeter. Uh, definitely nice. I like pumpkin pie. So I'll give pumpkin pie a 10. I'll give this 11. Because it's a hair batter. And then you get the 
sugary bits at the bottom. Some people probably give that sugary bit a 12, but I'm thinking probably about a 9. It's a bit too sugary for me. Yeah, I guess what kind of why I like a pumpkin pie is it's not overpowering sugar. Bottom is very pronounced sugar. You know, I like it makes me thirsty. This bottom bit makes me thirsty. Very nice though. And the good thing is, uh, this is like a slice right here. You know, maybe a big slice of pie, but it's not a whole pie. You know, so it's kind of like you know, I can do one of these every few days or something, rather than eating a whole pie in a sitting, you know, because it's kind of, it'll go bad, you know. So that's the cool thing about Canon, just making things more proportional. Very nice. Uh oh. <laughs> so this is what dishwashing liquid looks like when frozen. Uh, you know. So this is the thing, it fills up and overflows into this, you know. Solid as a rock. This is kind of overflow water right here. It's kind of this is this corner right here is the lowest point on this chain of three garbage cans. So once these garbage cans fill up to this level, it starts overflowing out of this. That's a half inch ice. It's pretty no, that's close, that's five eighths. Five eighths inch ice. This is why I don't like doing dishes in the winter. Oh, and why you can't do concrete, you know, it's kind of really, at this point, you know, where I'm at, you know, as far as infrastructure wise, you know, when your water freezes up, you can't really do much. First of all, your concrete would get ruined, or could get ruined. And then second, you know, it's kind of a, you can't get water to it, even if you could, because, you know, this is getting ready to pop off, you know. As the water freezes in these, that nozzle over there popped off at one point. The water freezes in the line. A uh, good thing about winter, though, is you don't really need to wash stuff. Because everything's frozen, there's no bacteria going on. But just give everything, I'm just gonna give it all a rinse. And that's not completely frozen. I was just joking about that. It's frozen, but it's like a slush. You know, I can maybe get a little. You know. Got a little out. That's all you need is a little. Easy peasy.